Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this very exciting Mishnu Media tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at the waveform scope, what it does, why you use it, why it's cool, and all that other good stuff. So, inside Resolve, we've got some clips here. Let's take a look at this one first, and the first thing we need to do is learn how to access our scopes. So a nice little way is down here, this bottom right hand corner, click on scopes. Got them, you can choose what you want to see. So right now we're on waveform, which is exactly what we want to see. We can also right click on our viewer here and go to show scopes, and that'll bring up our scopes and you can change, you know, all sorts of different things here. We're going to be on our waveform or you can also just hit control shift W and there you go. It's got our scopes. When we're in here, we've got our waveform selected. It's all we're going to be talking about today. You can go over to these settings and you can select, I just want to see the luminance channel. I want to see just the green and blue channel, just the blue channel, red and blue, you know, all sorts of good stuff. I'm going to just keep it on RGB. You can increase your waveform brightness so you can really see what's going on if it's, you know, hard to see. And you can increase your graticule brightness or decrease it. So I'll keep it about there. And what this shows is our brightness levels. So from 0 to 1023, that is 1024 levels of brightness, which means that these are 10-bit scopes. Other programs will have 8-bit scopes, which are 2 to the power of 8, which is 256 levels of brightness. And that basically just says... At value 0, that is as black as we can get. And at value 1023, that is as white as we can get. So if we ramp our gain up, you can see we start to clip around this point up there. And if we're doing HDR grading, which is sort of outside of the scope of this tutorial, we can go over to Preferences and User, Color, Enable HDR Scopes. And this changes from our standard brightness levels to nits. So 1,000 is here, which is pretty bright. 10,000 is up there, which is... A lot is very bright and it is a different sort of workflow which you're not going to worry about but if you're wondering where that is that is where HDR scopes are so now what does this actually mean well this x-axis down here the horizontal axis corresponds to the horizontal axis of our image so if we look and we see that we've got this brighter area here that is where Evelyn is standing and if we hit alt C for a new node with the circle power window you can see as we move this around this is the up and down doesn't change anything but the actual colors that are being shown because, you know, we're showing different colors. But as we move it right and left, you can see it changes the scopes. And I have Shift-8 selected right now, which is Node Solo or Highlight Node. It's got some sort of name. So that's looking great. I'll hit Shift-8 to unsolo that. Move it over there. And now this is showing the blue, green, and red content of each column of pixels. So you can see there's a lot of blue in the sky. Imagine that. But then whenever we get Evelyn, we get more of these wider variations of color. You see that her pants are more black because it's darker. And with the red, green, and blue channels overlaid, it creates a white, which is desaturated. So even though the pants aren't white, they're desaturated, which corresponds to black down here. And you can see if we move stuff around, so if we like bring our green up and red up, then our sky becomes a lot grayer. It's still red because of, you know, other stuff. But you can see as we move things around, that's what happens. So if you have, you know, two shots next to each other, let's say, go over to our compare tab, to this two selected clips. Now you can see it brings up the left one on the left and the right one on the right. And you can see these are very different looking clips. So if we select the one on the left and we say, um, you know, this is overall darker than the other one, so we can bring our lift up. And this one has more red in it, so we can add, you know, more red. And now just very roughly, we've gotten these two clips to, you know, be a little closer to each other. They don't match perfectly. You know, this one's got a little too much blue, so if we bring the blue out a bit. And the shadows are a little bit too saturated. So if we bring some red out of there. Now quickly, just looking back and forth between here and the scopes, you can see how much closer this is to the other one. And obviously, use your eyes primarily, but if you're doing really exacting stuff, referencing the scopes can help out a lot. I, I cannot emphasize that enough. Don't only rely on scopes. I've seen people and they're just looking over here the whole time, and then this, if I was just looking over here, let me just make these really big and I'll show you what happens. If you don't look at your image, so if I was just going by the scopes, I would do that and 
just sort of go around here. I'm going to bring Lua Mix down so that we have a little more granular control over stuff. So yeah, if I was looking just at the scope, it would probably be somewhere around here. If you look over here, I mean, that's not, that's not terribly off. Like, you can tell that the colors are similar, but, you know, it doesn't take much to just look over there and, and correct it and make it a little bit closer together. So, you know, now there's a little bit less difference between the two. So, waveform scopes are great for doing your primary shot matching. They're good for diagnosing issues. I love having them when I'm shooting on the camera because then you can place stuff where you want it to be. So, like, for instance... If we go over to this shot, I normally like to have my skin sitting around the 640 mark, and you see it's right about there. And if you want to see just where one part of your image is, you can hit Alt-C to create a new node with the circle power window, and Shift-H. Got to turn off our compare. And now you can see we are just seeing what is going on in that power window. So let's, and we could even go ahead and key our skin. We can see exactly you know, what we're working with. Take some of the lows out. So yeah, you can see we're sitting close around that 640 mark, which is where I like it to be. About, more or less. You know, plus or minus, whatever. So this could probably be a little bit brighter. So if we go over here, this will affect our key. And we'll just change the offset real quick. And bring that back down. So now we're a little bit closer to that 640 mark. And once again, always use your eyes because... You know, this is a pretty well-lit shot. But if you're, you know, filming someone on the street at night, their skin probably won't be around 640. But that's sort of a good reference to have. Just a quick little thing about how to use the numbers to get things rocking and rolling. You'll see a lot of people that automatically put, you know, the darkest point of the image at zero and the brightest point at white, which is a very bad idea to do. Because if we did that in this image, you will see... So that's just at black and that's at white. This is way too contrasty and overexposed because you see what is clipping out at white is not something that would normally be clipping. So it would be the shiny part on our nose, which you know, is just way, way too much, way too bright. We could tame this down, but it's much better to just make it look good. So, you know, about there-ish feels a lot nicer. And you see we're not reaching the absolute widest white up here because there's no absolute widest white in the image. If we went over to this clip, however, you can see that our sensor is even clipping in this, which is a whole nother video. But this we could put up at our very widest white because that is our very widest white. And then you see her skin is still a lot more normal. It's actually pretty close to where it should be if we contrasted this back down. And now moving the blacks all the way down would be a stylistic choice. And this actual shot in real life, you know, would be kind of washed out so you wouldn't have it all the way down to there. That's a little bit too contrasty, but I know some people like that. I'd probably keep it more around there-ish. And so just contrast it out a bit. Probably do a qualifier for a skin there. Just make it pop out a little bit more. Get the saturation some. Let's go to a little bit less derpy frame. There we go. That's a little nicer. And you know, I probably still wouldn't have it that bright. But just below. Yeah, it's now we're clipping up at the top. Save some detail in the hair. And now that's looking, you know, pretty decent. It's a little bit too red and it's a little bit too saturated. But this is just about how to use the scopes. And saturation is a different tutorial. So I hope this clears up some myths and misconceptions about the waveform scope. This went on a little bit longer than I intended it to. But it's a good thing to know how to use. So now hopefully you have a better understanding of the waveform. Go out into the wild and, and look at footage. If you liked this video, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the Meester Media YouTube channel. If you want even more goodness, check out MeesterMedia.com slash products. We've got all sorts of stuff to make your stuff look better or at least different. So if we added a LUT on here, you can see what that does to our waveform. And cool shadows. See, that doesn't do a whole lot. We can do this one. We'll do a whole lot. Ooh. There we go. Uh, that's cool. So if we add this in, you can see without it and with it, see this adds a lot of red, really warms it up a lot, sort of desaturates the shadows a bit. 
It makes it a little bit brighter and warmer. And you see that it, the really interesting thing it does is splits out the highlights. So if we look at this white part here, which is clipped, now this is separated and it's much warmer. So it looks a little bit less clippy, which is nice. And if this is too much for you, you can always go back and bring the gain down. And now we're still getting it, you know, some more fake information in our highlights, which is cool. So once again, I'm at Theo with Misner Media. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.